The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you have markets digesting some of the pullback we had on Thursday and Friday. We're chopping around right near the lows of Friday afternoon. S&Ps positive by five points, trading at 59.01. NASDAQ 100, pretty similar action. We drive down to 20,500. Right now, we're technically positive by almost four-tenths percent, up by 74 points at 20,500. 568 Dow in negative territory off by 49 points or one tenth percent 43,519 in the Russell positive by seven this morning Bitcoin pairing some of the gains still holding on well at 90,000 plus 90,325 technically negative by sixteen hundred dollars how about crude we opened last night with <clears throat> excuse me with a 66 handle we're trading at 6765 right now gold catching a bit back above 2600 a few gold bulls out there 2608 we're up by $40 up 1.5% you have silver up by 60 cents at 3103 we jumped to notes and bonds we had a little bit of lower price and higher yield the 10-year negative by six ticks at 109.11 right now we jump over to the dollar index dxy 106.56 so you see the moving gold right it's a pretty decent move right not a huge reaction now you do have dollar weakness okay from 106.80 to 106.60 not a huge move in the dollar for the type of action you're getting in gold gold up by 40 dollars 1.5 percent right now we jump over to the vix Spikes to 1755 on Friday's negative action in the market. We're back right now to 1656, and we kick off a big week yet again. We got NVIDIA earnings on Wednesday. Now, they pull back on Friday with the market, and they pull back this morning. Looks like that news breaking at about 4 a.m. Eastern time, potentially. Maybe it was 8 o'clock. Nonetheless, that slide having to do with Blackwell chips. They're overheating. Watch out. That news coming out about 48 hours ahead of their earnings and we jump to it there the headline I pulled a few overheating issue could delay the new Blackwell AI servers and this is you know this is the new chip chip Blackwell they're having issues with overheating when connected to customized server racks now these server racks combine 72 Blackwell chips okay so you create a powerful AI system with a server rack with 72 of them and that's becoming a problem. Yeah. They make design changes, but these changes are coming late in the game, is what they say here. And uh, the company is working to change the design of the racks to alleviate the overheating issue as anxious customers worry about delays. So there's not enough space for them to stay cool. They got to cool them somehow. The amount of heat, right? The amount of power, the amount of electricity that we always keep hearing about. It is real, man. You see the battle they're facing right now is they've got too much heat. They've got too much energy that they can't cool down in these AI server farms. It's remarkable. Uh, nonetheless, you got NVIDIA. We are down about $2.50, almost approaching 2%. We were down to 137.12. We're at 139 right now, 22. You take a look at NVIDIA on a daily basis, and we're right back to basically where we're at the highs of June. Now, it's been quite an acceleration. You kicked off the year at about 47. We were just trading at 147, but we get NVIDIA earnings coming down the line on Wednesday. That'll be an interesting one. Yeah, we'll jump around. All right, let's see what else we got pulled up. We talk about NVIDIA. That'll be an interesting one. And yeah, we'll talk the Fed. Uh, excuse me. We talk Bitcoin. Excuse me. MicroStrategy. 51,780 Bitcoin for around $4.6 billion. Yeah, it's not stopping, man. Yeah, how about it? Um, the largest purchase by the crypto hedge fund proxy since it began acquiring crypto. Yeah, they buy $4.6 Talk about buying the highs, but that's their game. 
So I find myself, I was reading this in the last hour, getting ready for the program, and boy, Bitcoin, right? BTC, 90,290. You're talking about being at, on that August 5th pullback, when you had the yen and the unwind trade going on with the yen and the dollar, Bitcoin was at 50,000. We just hit 94,000. So it's remarkable to be buying that type of, you know, buying 50,000 Bitcoin as you're approaching this 90. But what else? MSTR? Yeah, MSTR. But that's their game. That's what I found thinking about. And I don't say that in a bad way, right? That's their game. They can't stop saying. So be careful with MicroStrategy. Because I read that this morning. And as traders out there, you have to know a pullback might be coming at some point. Okay? But when your strategy is micro strategy, he's never going to come out and say, you know what? I think we're getting toppy here. That's not what this stock is about. This stock is about leverage to Bitcoin. He knows it. He can't slow down. You just traded from 50 to 350. There will be a pullback as they lever up and they keep buying nonstop. Doesn't mean long term that you're not going to go to 200,000. You're at 90,000. Yeah. They're going to raise $42 billion over the next three years. Man, you look at that chart of Bitcoin, right? How about it? Now, let's take a look at Ethereum, which is interesting. Not all cryptos created equal right now. Okay, Bitcoin is on quite a tear. But if this was revolution, revolutionizing everything, you could make the case that maybe Ethereum should be at least above where we were earlier. All right. So be careful as things get a little bit euphoric on a cryptocurrency that's only worth what the next person is going to pay you. And yes, it's probably going to be around forever at this point. But my goodness, you just went from 15000 to 90000 You just doubled in price almost in the last two and a half months. And when you see the immediacy of investing another $5 billion at these price levels, well, boy, maybe that was part of the acceleration that boosted it up and in the short term yes but why isn't ethereum at that price level if this is so life-changing for crypto across the board that's what i found myself asking this morning i said really he's not going to pause for a moment no he's not going to pause he's plowing in he's not going to miss any more of this rally now what i'll say to that is this thing just went from seventy thousand to ninety thousand. okay you did gap above that march high you did it on volume and that was the optimism priced in for the future. So hopefully he spent some of that $4.6 billion from 70 to 90 and didn't get in at 90000 All right. We check back in on yields right now. And, yeah, you put this thing on a daily basis, we're just chopping. Dicey area. Look at these four bars we got. We zoom in on them, right? Look at them. One, two, three, four. Wide price range. Closing right where basically the bar opened at. We're at 109.13. The market consolidating to either break through or bounce from that price level. And yields are going to be in focus. And that's what we're going to talk about when we come back, folks. We get the 10-year. Uh, excuse me. We get the S&Ps up by 7. NASDAQ up by 81 right now. And, yeah, we got NVIDIA trading lower on their Blackwell news to 139.48. All things considered, just chopping around this 140 price point. That is the high from June, 140.76. And we're just under that price point right now as they come into earnings on Wednesday. But what are they going to say about Blackwell? Overheating, trying to redesign those server racks. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back. We'll talk some yields. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. With updates throughout the week, exclusively for subscribers, whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's up by eight right now. Finishing up the conversation with MicroStrategy. So you talk about leverage, man, right? You're sitting at three forty-two right now. The news out there: they're buying more Bitcoin. Four point six billion dollars is what they're buying in the latest purchase. And the last part about this, thinking about right, is leverage, of course. Okay. Now, they originally in 2020 were putting in money as a hedge against inflation, and this is where, man, you see the ability. For certain leaders to pivot at the right point, you've seen it with crypto, and it's paid off. Hindsight 2020, of course, okay? But this last part I just want to touch on. The firm initially used cash from their balance sheet to make the purchases as a hedge against inflation. That has now shifted in the span of four years, with a dramatic run that Bitcoin has had, to using the proceeds from the issuance and sale of stock, which is a straight-out dilution, as well as convertible debt to leverage its buying power. The company aims to raise $42 billion over the next three years to put into it. And, you know, the reason why I point that out is because you have to be aware, and as long as you're aware, it's okay. One of the most difficult aspects of quantify is quantifying where the risks are, where the potential gains are, right? Are you even aware of the risks that are in place that you're trying to quantify, et cetera? This stock just went from 50 to 350, okay? The reason why I pointed out is because you can say Bitcoin's at 90,000, Bitcoin's at 90,000. What do you think is going to happen to this equity if you do get a pullback to 50,000 in Bitcoin? And I'm not saying you're going to, folks, but you better believe that it's possible when you're getting this type of volatility with a theoretical cryptocurrency, okay? With the way that they are leveraged... 
in a highly volatile instrument and they're continuing continuing to dollar cost average on the way up there will be a rip roaring rally and when you're using leverage it's going to be far more pronounced than the percentage that bitcoin is in and that's why you can go from 50 to 350 in micro strategy meanwhile bitcoin just went from only 40,000 to 90,000 right that's the difference between being up nine times your money or being up one and a half times your money trading bitcoin or trading micro strategy it's only going to be more amplified if it gets a pullback <clears throat> which it eventually will all things do doesn't mean you know no matter how great you are all right <clears throat> and we talk a little bit of yields we talk a little bit of rent all right where was it come on i just had you here we go so where do we go for inflation? Where do yields go? Well, we get the 10-year right now sitting at about 4.45%. Okay, this all ties together. This is what you take a look at the 10-year right now. Update that number to 4.45. Okay, 4.45. Let's do it right now. So we got an accurate number on the chart. 4.45 is where we're sitting. You talk about a critical area, man. The lows of 2022. Okay. And then you oscillate around this area, but 109, where we are right now, critical area in this tenure right now at 4.45%. What's even more intriguing is you go shorter term time frame, okay? And let's just put it on a 10 day, 30 minute, okay? We're very close. We're a half a point away from where we were on November 5th. Okay, if you recall, oh, excuse me, the point being for all this as we walk through it, let's put it even on an hourly going 20 days. We have lower lows and we have lower highs, but we're not moving dramatically following the election in terms of what you may have expected or in terms of what happened initially, immediately. And it's just going to be interesting to see if they continue to play out. Because, yes, you got some rip-roaring rallies in one way or the other. But you even take a look at the S&Ps. The market's pausing right now. Okay? The market is pausing. Yeah, we just popped again. From 5,700. Now, these are that's the rally that we had with the election. Okay? Let's zoom in. And it is cool going back on this chart, right? In terms of where we were... Let me put it on a daily because those are four hours distorting. There's your daily. I mean, what a buy, right? Going into the election, you bounced right off the highs of July. You don't have to be, you know, technical geniuses, folks, sometimes to say, hey, that's going to be an area we might find support, the highs of July. You had a high up there of 57.21. You traded down to 57.24. Yeah, 57.24. Within within three points of where that high was, you turned around, and we've since traded up 300. But guess what, folks? We're back to where you were on October 14th. We're back into this big bar from October 14th, just like that. So there has not been a breakaway in this market to say, yes, in the short term, okay? But look at this move. And pay attention to this move because you take this pullback out we got October 30th and 31st. You take the acceleration we got on the election, and you're just back to where we were consolidating for the second half of October. So the market's still trying to figure out where we go, and rates are going to matter a lot on that, right? We got, a, we got quite a deficit and quite a debt. We're going to have to sell a lot of debt to the market, and we're going to see how that goes. And you're still going to have inflationary factors. Now, rent inflation. The Cleveland Fed, how about 2026? It would make sense, folks. If you understand how it works, and I know many of you do, you get somebody in a rent in a contract, yes, you can bump it up, okay? And many people do. You can bump it up, you know, 5 6%. But what tends to happen is there's lag there, okay? And you have to understand that when there's lag, sometimes you don't up the rent. Right. Maybe in this inflationary environment, you have a tenant who has a stable job, pays their rent every month on time. They take care of the place well, etc. Sometimes it's not worth raising the rent 5% because the way I subscribe to the theory, right, 
because I have duplexes in Tampa, and now I have properties in St. Pete that my dad was managing that I'm looking at, of course, that are taken care of. And you have to make a decision most of the time, say, is it worth it to raise the rent if these people balk and they decide to leave? And many times, that's a close call. If they're really worth it, because you miss one month of rollover there, you miss a whole rent. Point being, there is a, an extreme lag in rent, which is a huge factor of CPI, not as big of a component of uh, the PCE, which the Fed prefers. But yeah, we're going to talk about this when we get back, because you're talking about quite a run here. Okay, rent of shelter. Yeah, it's a big number. 4.8% is where we're at right now. Annual new rents, okay, a different number, but we'll take a look at this when we get back because rents and inflation are still going to be in focus when you talk about yields being in focus. And we got the 10-year right now sitting at about 4.45%. We got the S&Ps up by 5, NASDAQ up by 77. NVIDIA going to open in negative territory. We're coming back for the opening bell, folks. Stay tuned. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got my markets open with the S&Ps up by one right now. We're just below that 5,900 price point. NASDAQ 100 up by 44. Dow slightly in the red. Russell up by six. We jump over to NVIDIA. NVIDIA earnings on Wednesday, and we're off by 1.4% on their Blackwell chips, having a little bit of a problem. They better not have a problem, man. This equity is priced for 
lack of a better term, perfection. I mean, you talk about price for growth. Have we ever seen an equity price for growth like this? They're, they have big numbers right now, but you talk about a valuation, folks, of $3.4 trillion, okay? Yeah, we better not have problems with delays with overheating next generation chips because that is not what is priced into that equity. Interesting that news comes out right ahead of Wednesday. Now, I can't help but go back to MicroStrategy. So I was digging, I was saying, what, what kind of exposure, what kind of leverage does this company have on Bitcoin? Because what do we always say about the direction ETFs, daily investment vehicles, right? Now that gets a little bit more complex because that's a double, that's a triple on the way up, on the way down, it does change things. But look at it in a similar fashion in that, boy, we are at very lofty levels on leverage that just keeps increasing, okay? And I looked at the number, the first thing I found, and this is only what I found on the internet, all right? If somebody has me, how many Bitcoins does MicroStrategy own now? I got a number of about 280,000 is what I pulled up, 279,420. Maybe that's a note to Elon, right? Is that a coincidence, 279,420? Uh, about 280,000 Bitcoin is what they own. And if you just take 280,000, okay, times, let's just say the 90,000 that Bitcoin is about at right now, that gets you to a number of 25 billion, okay? But MicroStrategy is trading at 72 billion, okay? You have three to one leverage. They have 25,000, excuse me, thousand. They have 25 billion dollars worth of Bitcoin and they have exposure to $75 billion worth of Bitcoin movement. What that says is, in theory, Bitcoin could go down 34, 35% and it would be a full wipeout. I'm generalizing, okay? And I don't think that Bitcoin going down 35% would somehow bankrupt make MicroStrategy, but you better believe it's possible when you got leverage to that degree. Okay, they have about 280,000 Bitcoin. Bitcoin's at $90,000. That alone's worth 25 billion. But guess what? They have 75 billion market cap on the books. And uh, yeah, it's a certain way to think about it. Doesn't mean they're going to work completely. There'll always be the spirit animals in this equity, right? Remember that one if you're looking for a big decline. Okay, but you better believe they are highly leveraged and they keep levering up. You were just at 112 on September 2nd. And listen, this is. This is not a bearish case on Bitcoin. It's more for a volatility case on MicroStrategy as they continue to ramp up the leverage and the purchases, dollar cost averaging up, that when you do get a pullback, it's going to be a vicious one for MicroStrategy. But that's the business he's in. He can't stop. He's got to be a cheerleader all the way through. And that means really taking some volatility hits. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, this equity went down 50% from 200 to 100 March 25th to April 29th. Don't think it can't happen again. But boy, you want some volatility and some leverage? That's probably a good spot for MicroStrategy with Bitcoin. All right, we check in, see how NVIDIA opens. Down by 2.4%. We check in on other, some of the other equities. Amazon shares up by four tenths. Is holiday season beginning yet? I'm seeing Black Friday sales everywhere, man. I was out a little bit this weekend. We're at Target. Uh, five less shopping days, right, in between Thanksgiving and Christmas, just the way the calendar falls this year. We jump over to Walmart shares. Walmart basically flat to the tick almost right now. We jump over to Target shares. Target up a percentage at 153.74. We check in some of the banks. Bank of America flat this morning. JP Morgan. That's a weekly. Let's put it back to a daily. Yeah, they open higher. We pull back to 246. And then you got Spirit going BK. Right? Spirit Airlines. What's their symbol? I should know my safe, of course. There we go. So, are they trading? How does this work? No, they're not trading, right? No, they're not trading. They file bankruptcy following the failed jet blue tie-up. Now, here's where you talk about merger deals, right? There was a lot of heat against 
the FTC and the Justice Department, whatever you call it, okay, the administration of not preventing some of these. And this is a legitimate case, okay? I don't understand how you say it's anti-competitive if not allowing these companies to merge ends up with the other company just going bankrupt. And meanwhile, the company that they said that they can't merge because it's going to harm everybody too much, the equity of that equity, the excuse me, the chart of that equity looks like this in terms of JetBlue longer term. So this equity, which is at $7, teaming up with an equity that's going bankrupt if they don't allow it. That's where you see some of the pushback, and probably rightfully so in this situation, because, man, that's got to be tough. If you're at Spirit, you're a pilot, you work there in any capacity, even if you're a customer. Um, yeah, nonetheless, Chapter 11, liabilities between a billion and $10 billion. And, yeah, they were going to get acquired for $3.8 billion by JetBlue. Man, they worked themselves a sweet deal. Can you imagine that? You're about to go BK. And you get somebody who's going to buy you for 3.6 billion, 3.8 I should say, and it goes under. You see some of the pushback because that's a tough one. Tough to square that those two merging was going to have that bad of an impact when there's many other carriers to the same degree. Competition, right? There you go. They're out of business. Boom. And yeah, it's a fairly simplistic view of things. But all right, taking a look at the rent. Back to the conversation. Okay. What's interesting here is. When this comes out on CPI, just the last point to really focus on, owner equivalent rent is something that is a theoretical number that does not actually contribute. Okay, It's actually something, if you think about it, right? CPI was accelerating in Florida in many instances. And I would say to my friends sarcastically, okay, yes, it's really horrible being a homeowner and having my owner equivalent rent skyrocketing. Okay, now, man. Government has to do something for people who are in like their 20s and 30s, first time home buyers. We should take some of the stimulus that we give businesses and make sure that first time home buyers have an incentive over investors or people who are already homeowners because, man, the separation that occurred even over the last five years is remarkable in terms of where interest rates are, where mortgages were then, and where home prices were then. But owner equivalent rent just basically means that you own a home that is accelerating in value, and if you had to rent it, it would be a big number. That is a theoretical number that's not happening today, but the number that is happening is people who are renting their homes, okay, that need to up the ante in terms of renewing their leases, that's gonna take time. It's gonna take time to circle through, maybe even as long as five years. I've had people, folks, in, in my places for four or five years, they've been phenomenal tenants, and I just said, you know what, I'm just going to keep them in there. And yes, I would have gotten to the point that I raised. But basically, next time somebody else came in, that's when I raised it. You can make that. It takes a while. All right, we're coming back. We're talking some other equities. We'll talk some Fed policy as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, 
taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the fund involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have markets shopping around with it right now with the S&Ps up by three points. You jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla up by 7.5%, up $24 to $344. You talk about volatility, right? This thing. Earnings in October at $212. You get the Trump bump from $250 to $358. You're back a bit. We're right back to pushing those highs right now for Tesla shares. And yeah, the news out there that National regulatory framework for self-driving vehicles, a top priority for the U.S. Transportation Department under Trump. Okay, now let's just pull even the headline over there. Let's pull that headline. Come on. There we go. And that's, I, that, that's, that's quite a picture of Mr. Elon and uh, Mr. Trump there. You know, the, the animal spirits in this equity, man. You got to watch out for because we're probably coming for the highs now. 414 is the highs. 400s right out there. We're at 344 today. Nothing's going to slow this thing down in the short term. But eventually, these cars are going to have to work, and they're going to have to work if it becomes a mass market affair. And that's where you're going to look for a little volatility. Waymo's already got a million. No, I say million. They got a ton of cars on the road. Waymo. And I already see all the videos, right? Have you ever seen the videos where Waymo's, they just end up all jammed up in one corner of a neighborhood or something like that? Um, get ready for some volatility because it's going to take a while until these cars are all perfectly able to navigate reasonable occurrences on the road. There's always going to be that instance that the computer is going to have a problem until it sees it for the first time enough times to prepare for it but there's a lot of headwinds for those vehicles being accepted by people on the road and that's going to have to matter and i'm not so sure we're all ready for that one yet so the the premise that within a year or two they're going to be mass market vehicles which is what tesla wants just trust yourself if you're ready and somebody else is ready, right? Uber's making deals, I think, with Waymo. The news came out a while back that they're going to start teaming up and you're going to be able to yeah, and they, they might not like that news. Is that the Tesla news in the mass market? Probably. Yeah. So Uber's down 5.3%. But the point being is that they're going to team up and they're going to give the people the option whether you want to hail a vehicle with a car, uh, excuse me, a human, or a vehicle that's self-driving. It's going to take me a lot of time to say, you know what, I'm going to save a few bucks on this ride. Send me the one that has a computer driving versus send me the human. It's going to take me a lot of time. Is it going to take you a lot of time? I think it's going to take people a lot of time to willingly jump into vehicles that are self-driving 
for the numbers that we jump in with human drivers right now for how big a company like Uber is. And Uber's going to be a competitor when Tesla gets there as well. Uber does not like that news today. They're breaking back in. And that's not really a defined channel. I remember having this on the chart. This is where we were at the lows of the beginning of 2023. Not really a defined channel when you're coming back into that price area. All right, let's jump around to some other equities. Salesforce, quite the acceleration in the pullback with the market, up to 348, back to 323. That high of about 320 for Salesforce force back in March. Disney catching quite a bit on their earnings last week. You're up to 115. We're back a bit. That's your daily. We put it on a 15 minute. You see Friday's action. You accelerate to 115. We're back a bit to 113 right now. AMC, I saw some news on them. Be interesting to see. They got quite the problems going on. Look at that chart, man. From 400 to nothing. That was the meme revolution. Uh, let's put it back on a daily. Whew. Yeah, be careful across the board on this equity, man. Jump over to Amazon. Back in the positive today. Microsoft shares up by about two tenths percent as well. MicroStrategy up another 2.5 percent right now. We check in on Bitcoin. Down 1.3% right now. We take a look at gold. So, you gold bugs out there. Look at this weekly, all right? You got an A to B, C to D, the A, February this year. Your B point, anywhere in this area, the highs from April to the highs to May. You make a double top there. You pull back to about 2,300, and we finish that A to B, C to D at 2,800. Now, you put it back on a daily, and from that recent move we just had... Okay, I'm going to run this one on a Fibonacci basis. Take a look at the blue here. I'm going to take the red off. I'm going to take that one off as well. Whoops, that was the wrong one. Right to the 50% of that move we had in June to here. 2,800. We pull back to 2,550. We've caught a bid. Now, where are we? Not that one. Hold on. Here we go. So Goldman, go for gold. I'd like to hear that. Central bankers buy Fed cuts in 2025. Yeah, how about $3,000 is what Goldman's looking for in gold. And Trump's policies may augment metals bull case is what Goldman's saying out there. Go for gold. $3,000 by December of 2025 in a note they put out. And yeah, they list metals among the top commodity trades for 2025. Prices could extend gains during the Trump presidency. It's already had quite a run. They look for crude between 70 and $85. The, the new U.S. administration further raises the risks to Iran's supply. So you're talking about crude there. And yeah. Potential strengthening in U.S. support to Israel increases the probability of disruptions to Iran's oil assets. So, yeah, Goldman, they like gold. And it is nice to see the action you're getting today because we have a little bit of action in yields in the dollar. But, boy, you got quite a run, man. We're now $75 almost, above $70 above the lows we had on Thursday. You're right back to where we were on Tuesday or Wednesday or last week. And yeah, you get the 10 year back to that price point as well. Yeah, and you see the, the dollar though. The dollar has not had a huge move. The dollar's right where you were towards the end of Friday action. So we have some yield movement. The dollar is staying strong right now. And this dollar, you talk about a critical area in the dollar. All right, come on. Co cooperate with me, charts. I was gonna put it on a three year weekly. There we go. I like to always say, right, you don't have to be a statistic, statistical genius. You don't have to be a, a master chartist to look at this chart, bump it out a little bit further, and realize, man, we're at a critical area to the upside here. Call it 106 to 107. You're at 106.50 right now, right in the middle of that range, and that's where you've turned around. It was the end of 2023. We rejected that area in April of this year, and we rejected that area again 
from a high of 106.05 in July and traded all the way down to 100. You see how well 100 is defined on this chart as well. Dollar holding up well. We got gold up big. Stay tuned. One more segment, folks. We'll come back. We'll talk some equities. Don't go away. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps negative by three right now. We're taking a look at the 10-year. The 10-year, we're trading off seven ticks at 109.10 right now. And that puts us with a 10-year yield of 4.47%. We might be on our way towards about 4.5% right now. And yeah, talking about uh, a little volatility. So we had been looking at the odds of December, and they were about an 80% probability sometime last week that the market was thinking we were gonna get a cut in December. Now it's almost a 50-50. On the December meeting, it's a 38% chance we stay where we are, and you go to a 62% chance that they'll cut by 25 basis points. Now, we are at 4.5% right now. What's interesting is you go out to June, and we know how quickly these numbers move. This is a 20% chance we just get one cut by June. There's a 5% chance which we know can change dramatically in terms of how quickly these markets move. Where the market's centered is at about four to four and a quarter. 
And that would mean that over the next five meetings, you could potentially get two 25 basis point cuts. But it's right there with one. A lot of cuts coming out of this market. And that would look to higher yields in the near term, especially. And that would probably translate to a longer term basis in the same way as we're at 4.47 almost right now. Okay, and then we said we we're going to talk a little bit of equities. So Morgan Stanley's Wilson. Yeah, we talked about him uh, many times. He called that pullback in 2022, and uh, he was wrong in 2023. As that bearish outlook remained, the market reverberated higher, but he's jacked up his estimate for markets looking at 6,500 by the end of next year, which will be 11% higher. What I found interesting about this article is the range of volatility Okay, post-election uncertainty has led strategists to maintain a wider than normal range of outcomes. How about all the way from 4,600 to 7,400? That's the range. That is the range from down 22% to up 26%. People don't know what's going to happen yet. Keep those spikes up. Be ready for anything. We'll see where this market's going to take us. Thanks, folks. Stay tuned. we got Basil Chapman coming up next. Have a great Monday. We'll see you Tuesday. Have a great one, folks. Thanks so much.